Today I'm gonna get out of my comfort zone and I'm not a political ferret to the day. I'm the parent ferret for today. And I try to give you some advices for a thing that is called the Terrible 2. Well, the Terrible 2 is a time between one and a half years and about three years when your child starts to see itself as a people for its own and start to say, I want to be independent and start, I want to have power. So what is behind that? Well. I have a child, I have this problem, I started to uh, to watch some videos about that and they are all made by women, which is okay for itself, but all the solutions are pretty much linked to harmony, it's something in the like of, oh, you just have to make yoga with the child, give proper techniques for breathing, we breathe in and out, and I'm sorry. It, it does not work for me that way. I mean, it, it sounds wonderful. It sounds wonderful. All these situations sound wonderful, but they do, do not work. I mean, not with a child that is really, really, well, have a wish and a desire for being independent. And I mean, pretty much all these ideas of what to do work pretty much with kids who are not really a problem and we come to this later what what they tell and why it is pretty often pretty useless but i want to talk about the let's say a little bit more challenging cases and where it might come from and how you can understand what's going on in your child because this is important you see the child starts up as a baby and when the baby says something in the like of Meh, the parents jump over run and give the child whatever it needs and children in this age, I mean, they do not need a lot. They need, of course, their parents, they need them close, they need food and they need their, their diapers changed, but there is not a lot. A baby will never try to get something that is in essence stupid. They ask for the things they need. But children later on, when they become toddlers, they start to see uh, that they have power and they see that they can choose between things. They can say, I don't want to eat the apple, I want to eat the cookie. And you then have to tell the child that it can't eat cookies all the day. So there are things that we have to do as parents to guide the child towards a better future. And this is not always easy because the child does not understand why the apple is better for him than the cookie. And we have to point that out and we have to work with the child. So the terrible twos are the time where the children more or less from one day to another start to crave power and to want to be independent. And this comes, especially with the first child, as kind of a shock because before that, children will not as much try to get things that are in essence pretty much stupid. But then they start to do really, really, really stupid things. And it is all about power and it is all about independence. It, it's about understanding those concepts. The child has to learn what it is to be independent, to be not part of the parents, to be one people for its own. It has to understand what you can do with power and so on. And all struggles of independence are hard, but they are necessary. And if you survive, then you often find a position of mutually respect and of a proper good future. But there is a fight. You can't uh, go over that. It will not work with, oh, we just discussed it. You can't discuss with a two-year-old. It does not work that way. A lot of women uh, in the other videos pointed out that they discuss it and they, they point it out and, and how, how to do that. I mean, I can, I can say, do that because it would be dangerous to not do that but how would you describe something like you have to brush your teeth or your teeth fall out and you have terrible teeth ache for a child who never had teeth ache it's not possible there is not the experience needed to understand this concept so it is about independence and power another thing is children are different there are some children who are on the easy side they are not into confrontation, they are not so much into independence. I mean, a lot of adults are not into independence, isn't it? So people are different, children are different, therefore what I suggest might work or might not work. And a lot of the suggestions that I read on the, that I have watched on YouTube about these whole issues work very, very well 
with children with a low interest in power and a low interest in independence uh, which means that it does not work pretty well with my child and the thing is all this harmony and breathing techniques and so on work pretty well with those people who do not need advice this video is a try to give advice to some people who really need that so where do we start well first things first punishment is useless the classical thing of the child does not behave so i punish the child with something does not work because you do not reach the child in such a situation they are in a frenzy they run absolutely amok they are in berserk mode you can't punish them they don't understand it they don't understand the connection it is useless don't try it try to calm the child down so this is the major thing that you will hear in 90 percent of the cases try to calm the child down if this works you do not research videos like this because when you can just say hey come on calm down and the child will calm down you do not even find the term terrible tooth there are children around like that there are children who are close enough to that so that uh, it is enough to say yes this is normal that's a phase you have to calm the child down and then the parents actively try to calm the child down and it works then it works but this is easy mode and some people have such children and i'm kind of envy for that but this is not the case that is true for every child not every child can't be calmed down that easily but of course you have to try that this should be pretty much the first step if it is possible do it so the next thing is that a lot of women said in this videos change the situation if my child tries to bite me i go three steps back so that he can't bite me or something like that or i pull over pull over and something like that so the thing is, you did not resolve the situation. You might have the same problem the next day. When you change the situation, when your child breaks stuff and you go out in the garden so he can't break stuff anymore, it did not resolve the situation. You, it is comfortable for you because you are not in this stupid situation anymore, but, but it is not a solution of sorts. You have to go into this confrontation, you have to resolve the confrontation. If you just go out of the way of the confrontation, you will always have this confrontation. The child will learn how to use confrontation and your avoidance of confrontation to move you where they want. So if they want to go to the garden, they will break some stuff so that you go out in the garden with them. This is pretty stupid. But this is the thing that comes over and over and over and over again. It is, oh, just change the situation. This works and you have to grab this solution if the situation starts to get out of hand, out of control and you lose your calm. Then you should change the situation. But you have to think that this comes with a price and the price might be pretty, uh, pretty high because this terrible 2 might become terrible 22. The next thing is stay calm and in control, especially of yourself. If possible, control the situation, but this is not always as possible. But staying calm and in control means that you have the upper hand because you have a clear head and you can react more clearly than the child that is obviously not in control. And then point out and being calm is one um, possibility to stay in control. The child will try to adopt your method. It will try to also calm down later on, argue its case and this is where you want to go. But this is important. You have to stay calm. And this is one of the core things that you have to master before you can become a parent. You have to have a high degree of self-control. If you are in the midst of the um, terrible two and you learn that you have a very low self-calm and very low self-control, well, uh, there are some possibilities to learn this more or less quickly, but it is a lot of work and I wish you a lot of luck with that. The next thing is being authoritarian is okay. This is one thing where I disagree with a lot of women on YouTube who say that being authoritarian is not okay because saying no to your child is violence. No, it is not. If my child wants to run to the street where there are cars uh, wanting to drive them over, I say stop right now. 
it is important to say I'm in charge. You have to do what I say because there is a reason. The thing is, it is absolutely okay to raise your voice, but I'm a European. I'm not in the. I don't not follow the idea that it is okay to raise your hand. From my perspective, raising your hand means that you're lost already. You can raise your voice because you then say what I say is of very high importance in this very moment. This is what you do with raising your voice. You say, now it is very important to listen to me. The thing is, when you do this once a week, it is not a problem because the child knows, oh, red button, there is something very wrong, I should really listen. If you raise your voice all the time, 20 times a day, it will not work because the child will not see the difference between let the cookie there and do not run on the streets because you get run over by a car. You have to use this thing, this tool, raising your voice cautiously, not non-stop. And again, I do not think that raising your hand will ever solve a situation because violence is never an argument. But I know a lot of Americans think differently. You're welcome to disagree. I do not care. So the next thing is announce consequences. Your child takes something, breaks something or tries to break something and crushes down on the ground and you take it away and say, okay, you can have this thing, but if you throw it on the ground another two times, let's say, it's gone. You give it back, the child takes it, bang, and it uh, falls back to the ground. You say, okay, that's your last chance. I give it to you, but if you do this again, I take it away and you do not get it for the rest of the week. Bang, it rolls down to the ground. So, be consequent. Do what you announced. A lot of people will announce consequences and do not do that. Children know that, understand that, that there are no consequences. Be consequent. The result is, especially in the first months, years, decades, that they scream and hate you and say, oh, you're terrible and something like that. But if you do that, if you are always consequent, children know that when you say, okay, that's your last chance. You can do this again. And a lot of parents point out that if you are consequent, children will always pretty much obey pretty much what you say. This is also not true. I mean, children will always try to go to this point again and try to step over the limits and look if you still be consequent. So you have to be consequent again and again and again. But the thing is, what I have observed is that with parents who are consequent and children step over this line and they do this, especially if, if people are around, they don't know. Perhaps because they know that parents then are more more eager to comply, to, uh, to, to perform as nice parents and give them what they want. They will always try this when you have people in your house and when you are out in the mall. So they will always look where they can go over the limit and where they can try this out. But if you are consequent and your point of consequence may shift when you are alone to when you are not alone. This is still okay, children will understand this and will take advantage of this. But when you are pretty consequent, the child that gets then to feel the consequences, which is not a punishment per se, it is a consequence, it is something else, um, will not scream and kick for an hour. They will say, oh, but I, will, I never do it again or something like that. Do not give in. So no, as I said before, if you do this again, I take it away and it is gone for one week. And we take it exactly on Monday in the morning out of the wardrobe. It is your fault. I announced that this is the consequence. The child will of course cry and say, oh, no, it's unfair. but this will end after two minutes. And then they, un because they know that it has, has absolutely no point of screaming of crying and so on and children are very uh, energy efficient they do not do a lot of stuff that they know is absolutely useless so when children when you see the children use some technique over and over and over and over again you will see that they have you at the balls they understand perfectly when they can play so being consequent is quite important 
So well, this became already too long and I know it is not very interesting for the crowd that is normally around here because you are all way too young, but especially the thing about being calm and so on might be interesting for you because you should try to be a parent. It is one thing, it's the best thing in the world. I mean, it's terrible and it costs you money and power and energy, but it is still the best thing in the world. But there is a cool thing about self-control, self-calm. This is one of the most important issues. And I see with a lot of parents, they don't have that, especially young parents, they do not have that. And especially then in this terrible two years, they have a lot of problems because they are not calm and the children take advantage of that. And furthermore, I mean, the, the situation with the child is a situation where you can't get out of the situation because you can't get away from your child. But if your child can take advantage of your inability of being not calm, other people, uh, adult people will do the same. And this might also be not such a good idea. So the information for those people who are not parents yet is work on that, work on self-calm, on self-confidence and so on and self-control and for these people especially the i don't know four dads who uh try to find to find a guy who talks about the terrible too i hope i could give you some insights inputs perhaps help tell me what you think about it <laughs> like share and subscribe and have a wonderful day